Hello, my name is Tatiana. I'm the founder of the Crema Cafe coffee shop chain. And in this video, I want to finally tell you how to steam milk, how to correctly steam milk. So why did I decide to take a video about how to steam milk? Because in milk, because in fact, on YouTube, there are a lot of English language videos on how to steam milk and the English speaking audience watches this. There's very small limited number of them in Russian. There is not enough information to understand how to steam milk properly and I decided to show you this today. I hope that after this video you will succeed. What do we need for steaming milk? Of course, a coffee machine. In our case, we have a two-post professional San Marco coffee maker for two groups. But in principle, it'll be enough for one group. We need a coffee grinder. We have two, but enough will be one. We need a temper to temp coffee and we need a milk pitcher. In our case, I have four types of milk pitchers. Two of them are from Teflon. This kind. One is bright, beautiful, and the second one is white. But if you see, they differ in their spout. One spout is more pointed. It's more convenient for latte art but in another spout, a little rounded, but it's also convenient, very convenient to draw different pictures on a cappuccino. And doesn't matter if it's a rosette, a heart, or a tulip. There are also such kinds of milk pitchers. They're stainless steel, professional Italian. Their spouts are also different. You can see here, well, in uh, principle, to whom it's convenient to work with, that is, both Teflon and stainless steel milk pitchers are convenient. Where the warmth of milk is felt more, the heat transfer is bigger. It is convenient with Teflon for drawing on coffee, but it is a little more difficult to determine the temperature of milk in it, because it retains heat and it's unclear whether the milk was warm to the desired temperature. That is, well, a matter of habit in principle to each its own. The steaming of milk takes place in two stages. The first is an increase in the volume of milk and the second stage is directly heating the milk to the desired temperature. The desired milk temperature is 60 degrees for milk drinks. That is, when we steam the milk, it increases in volume and warms up to 33 degrees around. Then we'll lower the steamer, that is, we'll lower the steamer and warm the milk to 60 degrees. Due to this, we get a delicious cappuccino or tasty latte. In order for us to divide milk, we need to understand how much to pour it into the pitcher. At this stage, here we have the pitcher, here the spout begins. We need to pour milk before the beginning of the spout. Um, here inside, um, you can also see where the spout begins. Why are we pouring precisely to this border? To have space to increase milk, that is, when we steam milk, it increases in its volume on average one and a half to two times. So we need to leave a place so that there's space for it to grow. Pour to the beginning of the spout and then start steaming. The first step is to pour the milk into the pitcher. During steaming, you need to hold. It is most convenient to hold the pitcher in this way, that is, control the temperature of the milk with your palm. That is, when the milk is steamed, increased in volume, we need to warm the milk to 60 degrees. 60 degrees is the optimum temperature for milk drinks. And now we control with our hand when to turn off the steam, that is, when the hand gets hot, it get, gets hot, but not boiling hot water yet. Yes, that is. It just gets hot. Um, it's time to turn it off. This is our optimal temperature. It's 60 degrees. Then we fill in the pitcher. We fill it half with cold milk. That is, we have chilled the milk from the refrigerator. It is desirable to pitcher be chilled too. In order to correctly place the steamer, we need to divide the pitcher into four planes. That is, here we have four planes and we need to put the first quarter in the middle. Here, put in our milk frother. Now, I will show you how to do it. So we get to immerse the milk frother to have the head of the steamer to this part. 
Why do we need this? We need to place the milk frother at such a depth so that the milk steams perfectly so that all the bubbles break and the milk does not burn because the steam is very hot. And if it's placed a little high above the milk or literally immersed in the milk, it'll start to burn. That is, our milk will burn and give a taste of bitterness that we do not need absolutely. We put in the middle of the spout the first quarter in the middle so that we have a funnel form. That is, uh, now when we turn on the milk frother, we will have a funnel form which will double our milk in volume. Let's do it. When milk increases in volume, we'll lower the milk frother below to warm the milk to 60 degrees. After we have beaten up the milk, we definitely need to blow out the milk frother and wipe it. This must be done urgently before pouring the milk into the espresso, so that we do not have leftovers on the spout. In order to take away the small bubbles that have formed, you just need to hit against the table a couple of times with this movement. That is, all the small bubbles that we have left will disappear. And mix the milk. We mix it so that the structure of the milk is homogeneous and glossy, that is, so that the foam does not separate from the milk itself and it's sufficiently combined. Now you can see the glossy structure of milk. The second stage of making espresso We'll wipe the holder with a cloth from Excess Coffee or with a napkin as I'm doing at the moment Grease the coffee Align the pill and tamper. About proper tampering, your hand should stand 90 degrees when you press. We hold the fingers in such a way that the pressure is distributed evenly throughout the tablet. Rests on the holder. In this case, we have a rubber mat so that the table is left intact and in this way we press. We scroll through the temper and wipe the holder directly so that all the excess coffee that we have in contact with the group is wiped and gone. We don't need bitterness in espresso, so we wipe. With such movements, temper so that these particles of coffee on the walls fall. In any case, don't temper it again. That is, if you see such a video when they temper it, know that this is wrong. Because this way you make micro cracks in the tablet, you're breaking it, and directly when the pressure goes into the group, you will no longer have a steady flow into the espresso. The coffee itself will already be uneven, the tablet you have is broken, and in your tablet are micro cracks. And so we wash the group from excess coffee and insert the holder. We turn on the group, substitute the cup, and wait for our perfect espresso. We turn off. The foam we have is fairly even, dense, coffee is not visible anywhere. After we stir our milk, we pour it a little.
Why is this done? This is done so that we have the same amount of foam and milk, so that we don't have only foam left during the pouring, or that only milk is left during the pouring, and we pour the whole foam. We have such a uniform, glossy consistency of milk, you can see that when stirring, the whole structure is stirred, not only the top hat. All the milk that is here. Shake a little, stir I would even say, and pour in the milk. We make a kind of cappuccino base and then pour the drawing. We got such a leaflet. In this case it's called a rosette. Your perfect cappuccino is ready.